sorry to inform you today a terrible grief has befallen at Barker Studios. It's upset the whole house, um, everyone in it, probably at least one or two other houses out there. Someone else out there must have left it as well. Probably you, you look really upset. You look sad. You might have noticed a particular character in biology hasn't been around since AS biology. Absent for a long time. And when he was here, he was a comedy genius. A revision hipster, positive minded writer, a straightforward kind of guy. Yeah, but sadly, my friend Marcus Barkus is no longer with us. Yeah, so this is us paying tribute to him. <sighs> I'll remember you, Marcus, but you will no longer Barkus. No more us. Sad, but thankfully, we're now at the time of death, so it's kind of handy he did anyway. Yeah, so we can talk about how you would determine the time of death of an individual. Luckily, we know it was just matches of minutes ago. It was quite sad, but we've got to teach biology, and that's so it. We'll get on with that. What we've got here today is our, our good friend Dave Babooby. He's joining us up here. How are you doing, Dave? No. Good. Yeah, yeah. Good. He's all right. We've still got CF, but he's fine. Yeah, absolutely fine. So, on yeah. to time of death. There's three main ways to determine there is. when someone had died. Early on, there's a temperature at which they are. Yep, so temperature, I'm going to go, I'm, going to, I'm just going to put temp with a dot at the end. Okay, then what stage of rigor mortis they are incurring at? Yep, so there's rigor mortis, is they've got a few little steps we'll go through in just a second. And then there's decomposition at the other end. So we're going to divide them up into the three main types and sort of talk about them. So Triv just mentioned, and quite rightly so, temperature is for a short while only, but it's a very good indicator, at least an indicator of when someone died. So obviously, straight away after you die, you're quite toasty, 37 degrees, you, you are yeah. like that most of the time. So if we have a temperature against time graph, this is time, oh, the, 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 the both T, and this is temperature. Yeah, so that can be temp, and that could be T for time. You're going to start at a nice even 37 degrees Celsius. Yeah. But you will quickly fall below that. How fast you fall, however, is to have a few factors. Yeah. And what you're going to fall to is going to be the ambient Temperature, yeah, which temperature, is the temperature of the wave surroundings, yeah. and so that, that also will change. It will. So that's a factor. If you're in a, you know, if you're in the Sahara, you, you probably won't cool down very much. No, you might even heat up. Um, if you're in a Sahara somewhere very cold, you will obviously lose temperature very quickly. So it isn't a perfect measure. No. You can tell a bit. You can say 48 hours will be this temperature. You know. Yeah. And uh, this is between 36 and 48. Uh, hours. This is accurate for for a particular ambient temperature yeah. of average. So none of the extremes, but average. Yeah. And you follow a particular curve called a sigmoid curve. You're going to fall very rapidly. Yeah. And make like a like a backwards S. Yeah. So like a two. So that's a, a sigmoid. I don't know if this is exactly how you spell it. I think it is. Yeah. I think it is. Sigmoid curve. What other factors affect how quickly your temperature is going to change? Well, it could be something about. What you've eaten, your size of your body in, in as itself. Your bigger body's going to lose more per time. It's going to have more there to start with, so it can change. Yeah. If you're in water, water is a good conduct or better conductor of heat than air. So you'll it will change quicker there. Um, time of day affects it. It's yeah. Nighttime. nighttime it'll be a, a lot faster as it starts colder anyway. Yep. Yeah. So you're going to get more given out per time by. And the clothing you're wearing will still insulate you even when you're dead. So. Yep. Yeah, there's that. So if you're naked in a river, you're going to uh, lose your heat quicker than if you're in a big like body warmer thing in a, in a house somewhere yeah. with central heating. So it's just quite obvious things, really. Yeah. But the sigmoid curve is important, and an estimate of 36 to 48 uh, hours of it being at all accurate or applicable yeah. for an average temperature. After that, however, we have to rely on other factors. One of these is our rigor mortis. Now, everyone knows that's when the body goes stiff, but it doesn't happen straight away, as it went. It doesn't, it actually takes a short while. And think about when someone dies, they're going to, they're not going to have, they're not going to have the circulation as good as it was when they're alive because yeah. their heart will have stopped and stuff. And there'll be no extra oxygen as they will no longer be breathing, so you run out of that pretty fast. But not straight away. So at first, your first step of rigor mortis is you're just going to, you're just going to be normal, really. You're not, there's not going to be anything going on. Yeah. And your things are going to keep going with the respiration, the individual muscles, because there's still oxygen in your body so when you die. So you'll stay at normal for a short while. But then things are going to start to get jazzy. At step two, you're going to run out of 
oxygen available in your uh, whole body as a thing, as a whole. So, if you do that, anaerobic respiration starts happening, so lactic acid is produced. Lactic acid is a key, uh, and anaerobic respiration, both of which the trip just said there. So your aerobic processes will all stop. Yeah. It will be entirely anaerobic. This lactic acid is then going to produce further problems, which yeah. is where the rigor mortis finally begins to step in. Yeah, so as your lactic acid is produced, your entire body becomes a bit more acidic. It does, and as the pH falls, because remember acid is less than 7, as the yeah. pH falls... Then stuff starts to denature. And that's your enzymes and stuff to, uh, to start with. And if your enzymes, you'll learn about this more in uh, topic seven. Yeah. But as, as your enzymes are denatured, your muscles won't be able to move because there's enzymes that uh, control the movement and all yeah. that stuff. So on ATP, you're familiar with as an enzyme. Yeah. So that will it'll stop dead. And there is a pattern, I don't know if you need to know this, but there is a pattern with smaller muscles built going first and the larger muscles becoming stiff yeah. after that. But you don't stay stiff forever. No, this, this uh, lowered pH and this build-up of lactic acid eventually starts to denature the proteins themselves, remembering they're also built up of amino acids. And when that happens, then the things holding the muscles in place then relax, essentially, and you just all become limp again. Yeah, so that's something a lot of people don't seem to realise, that rigor mortis isn't a permanent state. Um, but your stages in this will have certain times. Again, it's dependent on how fit you are, um, how active you were at the time. Yeah, if you were, if you were already sprinting away from someone, say, um, you're likely to have had a slight build of anaerobic respiration, then there'll be less oxygen in your body when you die. And so it's going to happen quicker. Stuff like this is going to affect it. Yeah. And that'll give you a good time as well. But past that, you can no longer rely on that either. You need to go on to how it's decomposed. Yes, and that's the final point. So after, after you've gone back to being relaxed, you can say a certain amount of time at least has passed. Yeah, but, but then you don't know how much further. Yeah. So, then we have decomposition. There's a few different parts of decomposition. There is indeed. Um, for colour, you actually change colour. You do, and this is to do with a number of compounds that are produced in your body after you die. Sulfhemoglobin. You know hemoglobin? Yeah. Sulfhemoglobin. I can't say it, but sulfhemoglobin. It's that's formula that goes, basically makes you a bit green. And as that continues, you eventually become purple and black, and it spreads to all over your body. Yeah. So you start with the green abdomen. So that would be the first step. You'd know if it only has a green abdomen, and the rest of the body is normal. It's going to be relatively recent. After yeah. this, but relatively recent. Then after that occurs, it starts spreading quite rapidly. Yeah. So then you know it's gone on a little bit longer. Then it will start to go purpley black, dark purple to black. Um, so you, that's an indication of how long it's been going on for. Mm -hmm. Also, in your stomach you have a lot of bacteria. That's actually good for you while you're alive, wouldn't worry about it. Yeah, but after you die then it starts spreading. Yep, to places where it wouldn't normally be found. Mm -hmm. And as, as this bacteria goes everywhere in these anaerobic conditions, it's going to give out certain gases, such as hydrogen sulphide, yeah. CO2. Lots of these things, and you basically you will sort of become bloated, you will swell up. Yeah. And so that'll be an indication that it's within an amount of time that all of this bacteria has happened. But then after that, eventually, because of yeah. the proteins being destroyed with this yeah. pH. Yeah, and then being denatured, there'll be essentially gaps in your tissue and all the gas will deflate. And you basically deflate as a balloon. So yeah. That so after that stage, you can say that even more time has gone along. So these are all indications of time. Now, after you've got lots of holes in your tissue and you've got unhealthy tissues in there. And parts of dead tissue, things will start arriving that will eat you. Yes, they will. Um, these are insects and yeah. maggots is the first example that are yeah. likely to come along. So you can see how far they've come in with how far the, they are in their own life cycle. So with the eggs, that's yep. quite early on. So then the person who would study this is called an entomologist. You that's that an important well. thing. So. so an entomologist would look at the maggots in the body and if it's just eggs you know that they're they're relatively fresh, they've only just come in, so a certain amount of time has passed, you'd be relying on the steps above it. If, like, really big maggots of their, uh, right near the end of their life cycles are in there, then because you know how long the life, or an entomologist will know the life cycle of a maggot, it will know how long that's been there, at least. So it's a minimum sort of time. 
and you can get an indication of how long it's been there. Entomologists yeah. don't just study maggots. No, they do loads of different types of insects, so now I'll work out based on what type of insect it is and how far it is in its own life cycle, what, where, where you must be in your time. So this is all quite gruesome stuff, yeah. perhaps. Uh, but there's but sort of succession links here. I think some of it's quite obvious, really. There's a few words in there, but I think most of it's quite obvious. Most, yeah. Sort they, of build out. they won't ask you too many sort of terms. You just need to know roughly things are. For this bit, they might ask you... They might have a table um, of different data from different flies. You have to work out when each bit would happen and why. Yeah, so they might give you a rough life cycle of a maggot or whatever. They might yeah. not use a maggot just to mix it up, but you're just looking at time. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, it's quite an obvious chapter, quite a gruesome thing, a couple of stages to think about. Yeah. And that's time of death. Next we're going to go on to the cause of death, so we're not, we're not leaving this area, not just yet. No, so I, I better get my... Uh... Whoa! Oh, Whoa, what is this? What? That's a dog, but it's... Good news! Good news! Marcus Barkus didn't die. No! He regenerated into something very fluffy and cute. Well, we're going to have to go get some cookies. Come on. Cookie time. <laughs>